Hello everyone, I'm Asif from Pradeep Tikaria. I'm MD, PhD Physiology and your educator for Physiology. Now, today we'll discuss about vector cardiogram. Before starting my class, I would like to inform you all that you will get all my lecture notes in soft copy as well as hard copy. To get the soft copy, you have to download the application Messalius from the Play Store and subscribe it. And second, to get hard copy, you have to order my book that is Physiology Notes which is available on Flipkart as well as Amazon. Also, you can join us uh, with our, with, in our WhatsApp group. Number is 7863822668. Okay? Link for the WhatsApp group joining, link for my application, and link for the book purchase, Flipkart and Amazon. They all are given in the description box. Now, let us start with our today's topic that is vector cardiogram. Here, let us first understand the concepts. Uh, during depolarization and repolarization, you can see here there is a wave of depolarization and repolarization which passes through the heart. There is flow of current at every instant. Okay? And this direction and magnitude of the current, you can see here, this is represented by an arrow. Okay? And this arrow is known as vector. Okay? Now, this arrow head, head of the arrow, this one, it is pointed towards the direction and length of the arrow that is directly proportional to the voltage of the potential. Okay? We will discuss in detail. So you can see here, during most of the events of the heart, there is ventricular depolarization and the direction of electrical potential always that is from negative to positive. You can see here, okay, negative to positive. That is most of the time that is the arrow direction that is from base part to the apex part. Okay? So this perpendicular direction of the potential during depolarization that is known as mean vector. You can see here. There are two kinds of vectors we will discuss. One that is instantaneous vector, instantaneous or instant vector. Instant means at particular time. And mean vector means average vector. Because we are we cannot be able to measure the vector at each and every second. So we are measuring mean vector. Okay, so mean QRS vector that is drawn from the center of the ventricle in a direction from base towards the apex. This is, this is a vector cardiogram. Okay, now another as I told you instant vector. Instant vector that represents magnitude and direction at particular time, particular instant during the cardiac activity. Okay, so you can see here when we wish to get instantaneous vector you will be having this kind of multiple arrows because at this time activity is this side and this side this way you can get different arrows fine now in normal heart if suppose we are taking mean QRS vector average vector the direction is 59 degree plus 59 degree this is the direction of mean QRS vector okay that is average direction of the vector during the spread of depolarization wave that is plus 59 degree now how can we calculate the mean electrical axis from standard two leads okay as we have discussed in our last class that there are 12 leads we are going to measure 12 leads ECG are there we have V1 to V6 precordial leads we have 1, 2 and 3, 2 and 3, they are bipolar limb leads and you can see here, AVR, AVL and AVF, they are augmented leads. Okay, so mean electrical axis and mean vector that is produced during the electrical events, okay, this can be recorded. Mean electrical axis in the frontal plane here, that can be calculated by any two the standard limb leads or any two augmented leads, either AVR, AVL or AVL, AVF, any two augmented leads, okay? Now, if we wish to get mean electrical axis in horizontal plane, horizontal this, we require precordial leads, okay? And for that, we use the, the system that is known as triaxial reference system, okay? Now, how can we get this triaxial reference system? I'll show you. You can see here, for that, what we have to do, we just have to move the sides of introvance triangle. I think all of you are knowing introvance triangle, negative 2, positive, lead 1 here, lead 2, right arm negative, left foot positive and lead 3, uh, this left arm negative and left foot positive, this way. But what here we are doing is we are just moving the sides of the triangle and allow them to intersect. You can see here, this is lead 1. This is lead 2 here. This is intersecting here. 
This is lead three. We are moving it in such a way that they are intersect at center of the triangle. I'll just show you. This is not the exit one. This is lead one. This is lead two. This is lead three. This way, lead one direction, lead two direction, lead three. So they all are intersecting at the center. Okay. So you can see here. This in this diagram, you can easily see this lead one. This one is your lead one. This is lead two. This is lead three. Okay. So. What is the axis of lead one? That is zero, because that is in the horizontal plane and negative uh, terminal. You can see here. This is. I'll just show you. Just let me erase all. So you can see. This is lead one. This one. I'll just make it. Uh, no, it cannot be enlarged. You can see here. This is lead one here in horizontal plane because negative uh, terminal that is on the right arm and positive on the left arm. Okay. In lead two, you can see here this one. This is lead two. This one. So sixty degree. Its direction is. And in lead three, the direction that is axis that is one twenty degree. Okay, fine. Hmm. Now, if we are taking the axis of lead A B F, you can see here A B F foot here this one. In A B F, as you discuss, left foot that is kept at positive terminal and. Other two are at negative, so this is the direction that is 90 degree. When we are making this triaxial uh, system, this triaxial reference system, you can see here we have made an arrangement that this is your zero, this one, okay. Then this is your 90, okay, this one, okay. This is one, this is 60, this is 120, hmm? so zero 90. This is one eighty, and this side there is positive, and this side there is negative. This is minus sixty, minus ninety. Okay, or you can make it as this side. Okay, from one eighty, this is maybe two hundred ten. Okay, so axis of ABR this direction, this one. So this is two hundred ten. This is two hundred ten. Fine. Then axis of AVL that is minus thirty. You can see AVL this one. Left arm is positive this here, and other two are negative. So this is the axis minus thirty. Fine, thirty degree. Fine. Now, how can we calculate mean electrical axis of QRS complex? For that, what we have to do is we use as I told you two limb leads, lead one and lead three. Okay, you can see here. This is lead one. This is the direction of lead three we have discussed. Okay. So now find out the QRS complex. You can see here. This is the QRS. QRS of lead one. Okay. Suppose QRS of lead one. Here Q is equal to three small squares. So take it as minus three because Q is negative. R thirteen small square, but that is positive. So plus and S having five small square, but they are negative. So this. One. So you will get five millivolts. So make a mark here at five millivolts. Fine. Then uh, now we are making algebraic summation of lead three. Here Q suppose it is minus one. It is uh, it is only one millivolt small square, hmm? but it is in negative. So minus one. R is positive with fifteen large squares. So plus fifty. And S is zero. So zero. So then it will be fourteen millivolts. So make a mark here at forty in lead three. And now You can see here. Make perpendicular lines from this two and join these lines, and you will get the direction of mean electrical axis of QRS complex. Okay, so this way we can be able to calculate mean electrical axis. Okay, so this is the same thing which I have explained you. This way you can get the mean electrical axis. Now, length of the arrow, as I told you, represents magnitude. Easily you can remember L. L के बाद m आता है तो length magnitude and direction d के बाद e आएगा electrical activity direction denotes electrical activity I repeat length denotes magnitude and direction denotes electrical activity or electrical axis okay now uh, just a minute now we will discuss abnormality in the mean electrical axis you can see here normal mean electrical axis this is normal axis you can see here this one Ah, uh, it is. You can see here from this also mildly it can be said normal. 
otherwise this is normal only 0 to 90 but in some books they have written that it may be minus 32 plus 120 so if the direction a mean electrical axis of your arrow is minus 30 to minus 90 this is known as left axis deviation how you will get this when you are making addition of QRS in lead 1 and 3 you will be having this arrow maybe this side so if your arrow goes this side means you have left axis deviation now what are the causes for left axis deviation easily you can remember left E E means expiration at the end of expiration L for lying down position Okay. These are physiological causes, okay, lying down position. Then F for fatty, obese individual. You have in obese individual also, you have, these are physiological causes. Obesity, so fat. So this you can easily remember. Deep expiration, lying down, fatty people, okay. And pathological causes, they are left ventricular hypertrophy, left ventral branch block and anterior lateral myocardial infarction. What is the reason here? Because if this left ventricle is hypertrophied, what happens? It requires uh, more time when the area is depolarized and you will find this axis deviation. Okay, so in left axis, uh, left ventricular hypertrophy, you have left axis deviation. So you can see here, this is the left axis deviation here. If mean electrical axis is between minus 32, minus 90. Okay, right axis deviation, when this mean electrical axis lies between plus 120 to plus 180 that is right axis deviation all are opposite to left axis deviation you can see here there there is expiration here inspiration stand up position tall lanky people whose heart hangs downward then right ventricular hypertrophy because of any pulmonary disease right bundle branch block because of right bundle branch block delayed activation of right ventricle that results in the arrow head moves from left to right side and posterior and inferior wall myocardial infarction so these are all the causes for right axis deviation okay so this is again you can see here now another important another small topic is vector cardiography here you can see when we are continuously recording all the vectors we find three loops here okay one that is loop because of atrial depolarization second is for, for ventricular and third is ventricular depolarization you can see here these are p loop Q loop and uh, sorry QRS loop and T loop okay so now let us start with the first P loop this P loop that is because of atrial depolarization this one this is P loop okay and this is small its reduction is you can see left and inferior and it gives positive P wave then QRS loop this one it is due to ventricular depolarization it is largest one hmm? its direction that is, it is directed leftward, inferior, and slightly posterior. And T loop that results because of ventricular depolarization, and that is opposite to the direction of depolarization here. Okay, so these are three loops we can find. Next small topic that is his bundle electrocardiogram. This his bundle electrocardiogram. Here we are measuring the electrical activity of bundle of his. And to record this, we just have to insert or uh, place electrodes in the form of intracardial rings, intracardiac rings, they are placed near the tricuspid valve. For, for that, what we have to do is we have to pass this ring electrodes through vein to right side of the heart and that is to be placed uh, in the position near to the tricuspid valve. This is invasive procedure, procedure so not to be done every time, okay. So, uh, three or more standard electrocardiographic leads, they are recorded simultaneously. Here you can see, we have three uh, uh, waves you can find here, A, H and V deflection, okay. So, here you can see, deflection of normal is bundle electrocardiogram. Here you can see A deflection that corresponds to the activation of AV node first. Then H spike that is because of impulse transmission through bundle of hills and V that is because of depolarization of ventricle. Okay, now what is the clinical significance use of the his bundle uh, ECG? Okay, here that is used uh, in patients with heart block. Most of the time there is bundle branch block to diagnose the bundle branch block. We use this his bundle electrocardiogram. Okay, so here. You can, first thing you have to measure intervals, three intervals are measured, one that is PA interval, you can see normal P wave, onset of P wave to the A wave, this one, 
and this represents conduction time from SA node to AB node because A that is because of the depolarization of AB node. Okay, so PA interval that is one and normal duration of this PA interval is 27 milliseconds. Okay, then next is AH interval between a B and X pipes and it represents conduction time of the A B node that is 92 milliseconds and H V interval that is time between X spike and V wave okay and uh, this is uh, you can see here this is 43 milliseconds okay this is the time interval between S spike and uh, E and uh, that uh, denotes that represents conduction through bundle of phase and bundle branches okay fine. So this is all about uh, today's topic, electrocardiogram, as well as I have also discussed his bundle electrocardiogram. Okay, thank you so much. Uh, we are not going in detail of this topic. We will discuss in our next class. Okay, so here I am ending. Uh, again, if you wish to get soft copy of all my lectures, you can download the application Vesalius. And subscribe for the same and if you wish to get hard copy you can uh, get my books physiology notes available in the available on Flipkart and Amazon and uh, you can also join our WhatsApp group link for all that is given in the description box okay thank you so much if you like my video you can like it you can share with all your friends and subscribe our channel thank you